happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the Sheen. Blah, 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 blah. You know, we're talking a lot of shit before the show started. Hi, I'm Gay Ann Bruno. I am your host today for Between the Sheets here on, oh my God, United Broadcasting <laughs> Network. Oh my God, we're on the first and third Friday of every month, but not really. So check the website um, and the Facebook page because my schedule is moving crazy around. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to go around the room. We have a huge full house today. I'm going to start with um, via Zoom. We have Sheena Metal. Hi, everybody. How are you? It's nice to see you. Good to see you, Sheena. Then we have Mara Shane, who's on her freaking phone. No, I was trying to get to the site to share it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have Tristan, otherwise known to everybody else as Roxanne Rosen. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Great to see you again. Great to be back. And then we have a good friend of mine. We're sharing mics because we have a special guest um, that wasn't supposed to be special guest, but she came, so why not put her on the table? But I have my friend, Rachel Bussell. Hi. Nice to see everybody. You can pull the mic closer. It's okay. Hi. Nice to see everybody. I mean, I know Tristan is like, like covets the mic, wow. you know, so don't be afraid. Just rip it out I'll of her. Come right in. Come, right, come right, right in. Right She's in. used okay. to people sitting on her lap and grabbing her oh, mic. That's it, true. It's you not an issue too. whatsoever. <laughs> not a... She's used to people sitting on her lap and grabbing her something. Something. Grabbing something. <laughs> hey, we're well, not a strip club tonight. Oh. <laughs> Yet. 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 Yes. Well, well, that. Yet. Oh, okay. This is taking a turn. Shut so we morning. have. It's already gone there. <laughs> I'm an Aries. Five, four, three, two, one. Dildo. Okay, there we go. <laughs> one more. Narcissist. Narcissist. We've got the two main topics out of the way on the show. Um, That's our show. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, we have, oh my lord, um, we have, a, she's an activist, she's a model, she is an actor, she is a host, she is an entrepreneur, um, uh, her publicist Mona, who I've known for a while, you know, called me and said, hey, would you be interested in, and as shallow lesbian as I am, I saw Jessica Clark's picture and I said, yeah, I don't care what she does. <laughs> I don't give a shit what she does. She's hot. Yeah, bring her on. Um, uh, and then um, now I hear her talk, and she's the f real deal. But she is happily um, co-coupled, coupled, whatever it's called. Ma are you guys married? Mm -hmm. Married for real. But let me introduce her. She is the host and probably a million other things, and you can see her everywhere. Just uh, look her up on IMDb. Um, but she's here to promote the show Coming Out for Love. And this is Jessica Clark. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm glad the bar is low and there's not much for me to live up to. There's a, oh, no, there's a lot. I feel better. <laughs> no, I, I, trust me. I, I, I like it's, it's like a typical like lesbian. It's like you know, it's sort of like. I mean, I think you're too young. But let me introduce because I want to introduce uh, the next guest, and she is. She probably has done so many films and just impacted the lesbian community mostly. Um, you know, she made it okay to come out. She made it okay to be visible. She made it okay um, when no one else was, or at least no one else that, you know, that moved my uh, barometer um, when I was coming out. Um, and that is uh, esteemed, esteemed film director, right? Whatever she is, she's just like the bomb, <laughs> Nicole Kahn. Thank you so much. Thank sweetie. you for joining. No, it's I'm true. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, you know what? It's so funny because I was talking to Mona when <laughs> Mona had pitched Jessica, and she sent me the information for the show because mm -hmm. I wasn't familiar. To be honest, I wasn't familiar with it. And I saw your name, and I said, okay, well, when we have Jessica talk to Nicole, I'd love for Nicole to be on the show as well. And then when you guys walked in the hallway, I was like, holy shit, it's like kismet, the universe meant to be. And I'm like, put a chair up. We're a little overcrowded tonight, but hey, it's perfect. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy and blessed to be here tonight. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Yeah. But what I was mentioning very briefly is back in the day, when there used to be lesbian bars, <laughs> because there was not one in Southern California well. left. Um, you know, it's always like you always like to judge the book by the cover, and that's because that's because you know you'd, until she knew somebody, but you used to see somebody go, oh, she's hot, you know, and then you used to like, then you try to talk, then maybe you'd buy a drink, and then maybe you'd get a dance, and then maybe that'd be the end of it. But 
you were so that's what I'm saying. Yes, uh, the bar is always a ve- was very low, very low. And then you got to know someone, and then you know. And this is what I hope will flourish with you. So here's the thing, okay? The show. Mm-hmm. Y- it was in the works. How long? Whose idea was it? Was it yours? Was it collaborated? No, I've tried to make this show for 15 years. Oh wow! It, yeah, I'm a um, guilty pleasure Bachelor Nation freak obsessed with it even watch bachelor, <laughs> bachelor in paradise <laughs> and i know all all their stuff and their stories and everything and i was watching it with my seven-year-old daughter gabrielle and she's like mommy i don't understand why aren't they dating women i don't i don't get mm-hmm. it you know she was totally like i tried to explain it as best i could <laughs> this is those other people <laughs> on tv yeah. uh, that you've heard so much about um and for 15 years i tried to make it and now having done this i know why it's so hard to get these made. Reality TV is another beast altogether. Hmm. I thought features were hard. <laughs> Nothing like this. Really? I would really be interested in knowing like a little bit about how much of reality is sca- is like staged and are you allowed to s- comment on that? We don't we don't we didn't stage anything specifically. Yeah. We because Is it all in the editing then the way they want to do it? Or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how did you two meet? Because it was your brainchild, mm-hmm. and then did you try pitching it to networks, or did you try pitching it, or you knew, like this, you wanted to just sort of shepherd it yourself? I wanted to shepherd it myself because I wanted it to be done the way a lesbian would do it. <laughs> 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 and um, I really, really thought it originally when we went out to go do it in 21, September 21, we just thought it was going to be a mediocre reality TV show that we were going to give to the community. But it turned it the, from the second day forward, it turned into something completely different. And from that moment forward, we had to raise the bar every day to meet what happened in episode two. So, so how did you two meet? I cast Jessica in A Perfect Ending. I love that movie. Yeah, Thank that you. was a great movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And Thank you. I have never had so much fun on a set as A Perfect Ending. And again, with Jess on Coming Out for Love. We, it, it's so much fun to work with her. We work very well yes, together. We yes, yes, we definitely do. How did the casting go? Did, was it like just an open call cast? Was it people you knew, people you knew? Before Jess came on, I was trying to cast from the w- internet as much as I could, based, you know, uh, from my website specifically, because we were <coughs> doing this all through Nicole Kahn Films Global. Uh, but then, as we continued to go on, and then when Jess got cast, um, she was like, if I come on, I want this to look like a community. And I'm like, hallelujah, and yes, let's do it. I was getting pushback from other producers I had been working on, uh, that they couldn't sell it if I made it that diverse, et cetera, et cetera. But we were in complete commitment from, from the moment Jess came to the door. <laughs> we were in complete commitment about that. So she had a very heavy imprint on everything. And it can only be seen on, streamed on the internet for coming out for for love love dot com. com. Mm -hmm. And there are packages, correct? So to sort of, now this is season one, correct? Yes, yes it is. Um, Are, because you don't care if a network picks you up or not, you know, because it's your thing. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do a season two? Yeah, we're already in talks uh, for a season two in Brazil. And, oh, and I don't wow. think it's so much that, yes. that um, Nicole was opposed to it being picked up by a network. She uh, just very much wanted it to, you know, be her child and, 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 you know, by queer people for queer people. And that wasn't something that she thought was going to be uh, committed to at the time. Um, and then when it came ter- time to sort of have the finished product, you know, it was a had already started to be a turbulent time in the reality landscape and much bigger dating shows and ours were getting canceled or moved over to smaller networks and stuff. So I think it was a combination of things. I do think, you know, it may be challenging to some networks with the, the visibility that we did have. Um, but I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, the, SAG the, is going on strike, yeah. so oh, the I networks know. are all looking for reality <laughs> we're, we're shows right now. <laughs> we we yeah. knew, though, that nobody would let us cut it the way I wanted to cut it, yeah. you know, and we have this tag. It's like reality TV felt like a feature because it's yeah. not like <laughs> reality TV you right. sh- we're usually seeing. But in an ideal world, you know, the, the viewership and, and sort of the viewer response to this project will be significant enough that there will be networks that will become interested. Mm-hmm. Um, however, that's out of our control, and it's one of those things. 
like if you want and Nicole has lived by this her entire life like if you want to see content out there in our community you pretty much have to do it yourself mm. yeah. you just yeah. do and that's the reality and mm. and you're a forerunner of that and you're still doing it now and you're still kind of pushing the you know so mm. why do you think Okay, well, really, why do you think, because everything's all, like, right now, it's, it's cool to be LGB. I mean, not cool to the straight people, but, you know, a lo there's a lot more visibility of being mm -hmm. LGBT+. Plus. Um, there are a lot more network streaming, um, trying to show more of a reality, you know, because, like, the network shows, uh, and I said, I've been at a network for many years, you know, whenever we cast a gay person, mm -hmm. it was always a stereotypical gay person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, more and more, you know, as I'm seeing, not only with the network, but just across the board, they're making our relationships seem more natural. Not like, ah, the gay cousin or, ah, the gay son. <laughs> it's sort of, <laughs> this is what is happening, you know, even on commercials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that, it's still an uphill battle, for example, to get something like your show on, I won't say network, I'll just say, um, I, I don't like know. Like mainstream? Mainstream. Because we're, we're a niche demographic, we just are. Mm -hmm. You know, we're at 10, 15%, we're obviously h much higher than that. But if you're thinking about anybody who's in corporate America or studio and they want a, a, you know, a bottom line thing, you just, it doesn't, feature if you are just doing it for a slice of a demographic our challenge is to make those stories and this show really really fascinating to the straight audience because mm -hmm. I will tell you people in the straight mainstream community are so blown away by this show because they've never seen us like this um, one of the other publicists that was working with Mona who's been in the business for 25 years and she's hard-boiled she was crying after episode two and wrote me this beautiful note. Mm. Did you see, did she share no. that with you? No. Oh. Um, she was like, these women are young and they talk like scholars, what the fuck? You know, it's <laughs> like really, it shows our community to be unbelievably multi-talented, multi-diverse, multi-everything. So. so we just got finished, or my friends uh, watched uh, The Ultimatum, mm -hmm. the queer one. Mm -hmm. Maybe they all got a boost to do that on Netflix because the show is a, is that was like a spinoff of the straight right. straight mainstream The Ultimatum. Is that right. it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, one hundred percent. And 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 you know they they created something fantastic, and I know that they're hoping for a season two specifically mm. centered around our community as well. But absolutely, that's that how was, they got that it. That was yeah. only made because mm -hmm. it was a pre-existing IP. Mm -hmm. Which right. was very exactly. interesting to me because I mean, I've, I've watched it all, like The Bachelor mm -hmm. and The Bachelorette. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I mean, I don't watch it, but it's been popular. You would think, and maybe because it's ABC, okay? Oh, no. You would think that they would have tried this already. Okay. I can't believe okay. they haven't. But, okay, but, you, you have to, under, oh, I'm so yeah, sorry. No, I do okay. have to say this. Yes. Because as much as I'm a Bachelor Nation freak, <laughs> Bachelor Nation, the corporation, is homophobic, xenophobic, oh, racist. Oh, really? Yeah, oh okay. my God, yes. It took them 20 fucking seasons. To, to, I'm so sorry. To have a blow. No, you're, you're allowed to say that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. 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 You're They're good. highly yeah. religious, you're highly. Yeah. They are? A woman of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you had to know? fight. And think about it. Think about the narrow representation of straight women on that show. Everyone oh. has the same hairstyle. Yeah. Everyone wears the same dress. Everyone has the same yeah. nose and the same boobs and, and body. all this stuff. Right. Yeah, exactly. the physique. If you get above a size two, like yeah. that's a big oh, event. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're identical. And yes. some of the time, I, I don't personally enjoy the show. I find it bo I find it completely boring <laughs> because they bear no relevance to my life at all. <laughs> like, um, I'm just being honest. Like, yeah. you want to hear the yeah. reality I watch? I watch <laughs> Ice Road Truckers and uh, <laughs> Axemen and like all of that like <laughs> adrenaline right. stuff where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to learn how to like drive across a frozen ocean like that's, that's my stuff that but they, is cool <laughs> i like that <laughs> but but yeah if you think about how narrow the representation is of straight women and i think you know more straight women would identify as high femme certainly than in the right. than in the lgbtq community mm -hmm. so think about how detached an experience it's for us trying to get 
a, a, a queer show on a network where they're going to show that narrow of a slice of our visual community. That like that is so sense. invalidating. That is pure erasure. Yes. That is not for us at all. It is for them so they can occasionally look through their male gaze get off on the like <laughs> hot femi lesbians that make out with each other mm -hmm. and go back pat themselves on the back and say that was our diversity for the year yeah that's literally yeah. how they are yeah like Elle fanning just spoke about the fact that she lost her job when she was 16 years old because she wasn't fuckable right like this is legitimately still and you know uh -huh. really yeah. you're gonna pit lesbians and straight men against yeah. each other that's like, what I, that's actually i was thinking about that show because that's the only other show that had the women competing to date a woman but i forgot there were men in there they too to compete against the men. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, how and then, stupid. And how Tila awful. specifically spoke at before she completely lost her mind. Mm -hmm. Tila um, spoke out about um, Tila specifically spoke out about the fact that she was very heavily encouraged to choose a man. Oh, Hev really? Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Mm -hmm. And also because the front runner was the only real. Butch that was on the show. The Shane Danny Campbell. Be? The Shane one. Oh, the yeah. other one. Da yeah. Not Danny Campbell. Yeah. There was the one that looked so much like Shane from the L Word in that show. Was there? Yeah. She's that. in love with Jane. Oh my God. What was her name? <laughs> She's, um, I asked her out once Good on Facebook. <laughs> but she did, she did not respond. <laughs> hey, you you never just went into the know. others. The, the, the <laughs> others request. That's all. Yeah, the others. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. The general. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to throw us off track just now but no. you were saying yeah that <laughs> i was just on my high horse about the fact that, no, right. that the reality is this show would not look like the way it does and also it would have been neutered i mean when we're talking about the yeah. the conversation in 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 episode two about the n-word and the organic conversation that came out of that most of that would have been edited yes. out most of it would most of like what the asian americans had to say wouldn't have even made it Correct. to the show so like once again you're like over and michelle like our other michelle mm -hmm. candidate who is both queer and a deaf woman mm -hmm. And so working with that intersectionality, that would never have happened, not in the way right. that it did, you know. And so the choice, I think, for Nicole and then later for for me as well was to go all in and create like a truly authentic show that we did not feed or set up or anything like that and hope that the response would be significant enough and that people would see it and that there would be a proven audience, you know because that's the only other way you get stuff. You have mainstream. far more creative control, right? Doing it this way? Well, yeah. yeah. I have 100% creative yeah. control. It's worth it. There's yeah. no broadcast standings and practices. No. There's no, no network people coming in, giving also, notes, nothing. I'm sorry, I just want to make a comment about that. We mm -hmm. have 19 guest judges, and we have the 16 girls. And the 19 guest judges, if they have any sort of commercials, I put them right in the show. You're not going to get that from a network. I promote our community oh, without right. being paid. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I've cut those people's commercials into the show. And Yeah, uh, I noticed that on the first episode. I was yeah. watching some of that. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of commercials, hi, everybody. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Between the Sheets here on the United Broadcasting Network. I'm Gayanne Bruno, your host. We have two wonderful, besides my beautiful, lovely co-hosts, we have two wonderful guests tonight, Nicole Kahn and Jessica Clark. So call in 323-524-2599. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. Just call in. <laughs> <laughs> I love, you know, Jessica, where's your accent from? I love it. Thank you. My accent is so mangled now. Um, it, I grew up in London, um, mm -hmm. so I was there until I was, you know, like 18. And then uh, I did like a year in an undergrad law program at London School of Economics. was like, mm. I did too. I mean, I did the whole four, I did the whole, like. Uh -huh. Well, you don't, you don't have the, you don't have the notoriety of being one of like three people that ever dropped out of that school. Did you really go to L London School of Economics? No, no, I didn't go oh, there. <laughs> Where'd you go? I went. You did I mean, law. I, you did law? She went I did to law. No, no. I actually lived in London, yeah. and I actually and I did a year at um, shit. What's it called? Richmond College. Oh, very nice. I did a Good. year there mm -hmm. and wanted to stay mm -hmm. and finish my university mm -hmm. there, but mm -hmm. they wouldn't let me because I was American. So they had to send me back. But I did actually go to law school. I went to UCLA. Oh, very cool. But I did not practice. I graduated knowing I damn well was never going to be a lawyer because those people are assholes. Yeah. And I'm competitive in certain things, yeah. but not that. So it Done. was. It was literally me. I was like, wait a minute, I hate everybody. I like, hate I hate hated these people. Them. I hate yes. these people. You know, 
know, and I had one amazing professor who basically stood there at the beginning. He was a guy, he didn't look very inspiring. He said, let me tell you, he's like, if you're becoming a lawyer because you want to be rich, he's like, that's great. You will be. If you're going to this school, you will be really wealthy. He's like, I have a beautiful house that my ex-wife owns. who doesn't speak to me. And I drive from the apartment I pay too much money for um, to in my car to the office where I spend 18 hours a day. And then I go back to my apartment by myself yeah. with my kids that don't talk to me. And you better make sure you want this. And I wow. was like, <laughs> not sure that I do. Not sure. Not but sure then, that but I then do. you notice like, it, it does take a certain person. Like I looked and I was scanning, you know, and I'm like, I would never want to be friends with any of these people. <laughs> I wouldn't even, I would never want to fuck any of these people. I don't even want to be associated with them. But, you know, I just finished it because I'm that kind of person that when you do something, I didn't want to drop yeah. out. Plus, my parents paid, and I didn't <laughs> want them to, like, waste all the money. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my mom is this, like, art, artist, bohemian, whatever. She didn't notice that I dropped out for about six months. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. The artist how, bohemian. How, <laughs> how is your uh, family with you being the celeb you are today? Oh, they don't care. Like, <laughs> at all. Um, when I was on True Blood... Um, that was kind of cool. My mom liked that because, like, lots of her friends and stuff were really into True Blood. So that <laughs> that was a yeah. great show. Oh my god, no! I was a fan Lilith. of the show before I was cast. I, I was know. so excited. Mm -hmm. Still one of my and favorites. Rob Lowe, you got to do stuff. I did. He's a with gentleman. Him. Yes, he I played his. He's wife. a Republican, though. Yeah, I, I worked with him many times, and you know, and I kept saying to him, Rob, because over the years, over 34 years, I've worked. I said, Rob, I adore you. I mean, there is not one thing I dislike about yeah. you except your politics. Yeah. So please, let's not talk about it. Oh, I have to do that even before 2016. Like there are just certain things where I'm like, let's just not. Mm -hmm. Let's just not. <laughs> yeah. But can we all? Raise a rebel yell yes. for the indictment, please. Oh, absolutely. Okay, thank okay so you. what's yes. happening? I don't. Even, I don't want. Do I don't even watch. Oh, that's like, a whole show. I don't watch TV. I don't want to waste. <laughs> oh Here's the thing. God. The all, the bottom line is he was indicted. I don't want to yeah. talk oh. about him. Okay. Okay. That's giving him more. Yeah. You know, bullshit. I hate him. I didn't even know. <laughs> I hate him. How do you oh, really feel? We all hate him. We all hate him. I hate him. But um, Jess and I were glued to CNN. We were last night, yeah, and this morning. And happy, happy. It couldn't happy. have happened to a nicer man, right? <laughs> <laughs> so charming. Google this. <laughs> so, how did your parents? Like, when did you come out, Jessica? Um, okay, so uh, originally, I think I was about thirteen. And I was at a family barbecue with like extended family and stuff, and someone asked me what I wanted to be when I was grown up, and I said a lesbian. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that was That's so. Right. Know thyself. <laughs> um, but but people spent a lot of years in, in my family and outside uh, trying to convince me that I wasn't because they just could not get their head around it. Like when you were talking about lesbian bars, I am like at the tail end of the lesbian bar community and like they, it was awful for me. I would go in there and they would be like, are you lost? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, ugh, Taurus, why are they here? Or like whatever, right. you know, mm -hmm. looking around for the man that I'm with to pick them up. Right. Like, you know, all of that stuff, which I get because like, it you happens. know, it happens. It happens all the time. Um, but it was, I was like, do I have to get like, I'm get like tattooed <laughs> on my <laughs> forehead. I literally would be like, I'm hitting on you right now. <laughs> right. Would and you no like to take me the out? Car. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> Don't, like I just hi there's hi, no husband in the car. hi. You know? <laughs> Cuz you know people have pulled that. You know it. Yes, 100%. <laughs> oh god, yeah. So your parents obviously were oh. not okay with it? Um, you know, well, it's just my mom. My dad's a loser. Um, <laughs> so my mom just was, you know, she thought it would be a phase or whatever. And, you know, she did. She's that parent thing where everyone thought my brother was going to be gay. So everyone was prepared for him to be gay. <laughs> and then they were completely thrown because while he, I mean, listen, he plays into me. He has no problem. Right. But he's straight as hell. But, um, <laughs> yeah, just no one really believed me. I think it wasn't until, like, my mid to late 20s where everyone was like, oh, shit, she's really not, like... <laughs> You know, I dated this one. Well, I dated a couple of like wealthy guys when I was in New York because everyone was like, you're not gay. And I was like, all right, let's see. And, <laughs> and um, you know, it's fine. I actually like I don't hate it. But you know, why I don't hate it because I don't care. Right. You know what I mean? And so because I had that detachment, like they were obsessed with me because I was completely detached. Yeah. Right. But yeah. like I had no like whereas with women, it's like they fucking get me there. Yeah. And then <laughs> then like even if they're the worst, I'm still like, but. <laughs> you know, so I just, you know, and then I realized that I wasn't being fair to the men or to myself because I knew I was never going to love them the way I was capable of loving someone. Mm -hmm. And that someone is a woman and have been, you know, 
So, yeah. Um, so I didn't really give anyone any choice. I was just kind of like, this is who I am. Yeah, I just so came. how did you get into the acting field? So you, you, you dropped, dropped out of school. What happened? Dropped out of school. Um, I had actually uh, a couple of years prior won. <laughs> I won a national modeling competition Makes in the sense. UK. Um, which was a, a TV competition and it was like this like really cool like the big breakfast competition and uh, yeah and so they were offering a 5,000 pound prize okay this is a long time ago it was a lot of money it was like three grand for me and then two grand for like your nominator um, but I didn't tell anyone I was going because I was embarrassed and I went and I like anyway I made past the first thing forged my mom's signature kind of went home and was like I did this but yeah. but you could win money and then the the final was live on TV and it was the same morning as my math final for my GCSEs um, and so I had to get special dispensation from the exam board to go do this live show, <laughs> which I won. Oh. And then, yeah, and then I was like, oh. Um, and then I couldn't even really enjoy it because I was so freaked out about my math exam because I'm so bad at math. I'm so bad. Like, I'm pretty smart, like, overall, but math no, is like... Me too. I just I don't get it. Algebra and chemistry, or like they're it's they're speaking a foreign language. I to know, me. and the thing is, chemistry. I want to be good at it. Like it's so cool. <laughs> I can. Yeah, I can. We can't be good at everything. No, I know. well, some of us. I I, I want to. <laughs> I guess I can. I'm good at everything except <laughs> math. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I love myself. <laughs> as you should. As you should. Math is awful. It should I'm be. I'm good at biology. Oh, I was good at biology and statistics. So I'm like, I am smart. Yay. I wasn't good at statistics. I could care less about statistics. Yeah. I'd also really like to propose a question to Nicole, if yes, I may. Yes, you can propose yes. a question to Nicole, if you may. I, Go ahead, I always wanted to be a, um, a film director. Mm -hmm. And I've made little things of my own that are not affiliated with any production crew. Just stuff I've done, like web series and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, obviously you, well, you were probably born directing is since you were a kid and i just want to know like what did you always know for sure that that was your passion um and that would be your career and how did you make it happen uh well <laughs> i was i wanted to be a writer from the time i was in third grade mm -hmm. i was just insane for writing and i didn't realize it but i was making my own storyboards by cutting out all the comic strips out of the sunday paper and making my own stories oh. until i found brenda star oh yeah and i had no idea why i was so in love with this She's brenda pretty. star i identified totally with the guy but totally clueless right mm -hmm. so Fast forward many, many years, I got into the party scene really bad. When I was 24, I finally quit drinking. And um, I started, I went, I ended up um, doing accounting for years, like wow. not fun, but you do it. Um, and so, which came in handy when I had to budget for my film. <laughs> <laughs> you have no more money left. <laughs> um, and I went to a film festival and saw um, Desert Hearts. Oh yes, and yes. I it was after watching about 400 hours straight at the Evergreen Film Festival of because I'd never been to a gay film festival. <laughs> uh, and when that was the last film I saw, and all the way drive back from uh, to come where Evergreen is back down to Portland, I was like, I have to make people feel like what she made me feel like Aww, just now. That's mm -hmm. That's all I want to do. That's so sweet. I don't know why, but I'm doing it, and I'm doing it, and the mo that, that from that moment forward, I go to all these little film seminars. I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. Mm. I ended up renting a room to, doing all my accounting, I ended up doing <laughs> renting a room. I bought a house, rented a room to a, a producer, uh, or a, PA, uh, a first assistant director, <laughs> and a, pro a production manager, Pam Curry, mm -hmm. and she became the producer of Claire of the Moon. And that just sort of, you know, catapulted me into... Claire of the Moon actually had me crying. Even though I watched it, you know, even though it was an older film, mm -hmm. um, I was so crying Because she was one. born in what year? Oh, oh! you guys want to really know? Yeah, 19, what, 12? Who was born? You were 12. You, what year oh, were you born? Oh, I was born in 75. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, no, I, I saw it when I was like in my early 30s. Mm -hmm. And even though it, it was very um, 
dated, like as mm-hmm. far you know the hairstyles and everything. I could really identify with it. Do you know I get emails all the time from college students. Mm-hmm. This is like the clunkiest filmmaking ever, <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, it still resonates, and it's thirty years later, and it's one of the things that's still going strong in my royalties. So <laughs> I, I, what was your inspiration for Claire of the Moon? Yeah. It was, I was originally going to do a 10-minute short. Just to that's it? To, yeah, that, I was going to do a 10-minute short about a woman who's uh, interviewing a sex therapist that she kind of thinks is a sex, uh, you know, a lesbian, but she's not really sure. And now she's interrogating her. The tables get flipped, and I wanted to do this short film because I didn't really have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But it became Claire of the Moon. Wow. It wrote me. Yeah. And, um, and then I ended up having enough money to fund some of it myself. And then I went to every family friend, and I took out, like, 30 credit cards, truly. Mm-hmm. Wow, and okay. I never paid the film off, actually, because mm. it was so expensive to make. It was 35 millimeter. You know? Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. Right. It was a real deal. Yeah. Uh, the, so. the thing about what I love about your films is they're just so full of emotion. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And you don't see that in a lot of mo- in very many movies these days, um, if, according to me. From intense emotion of any kind and I think one of the things that it makes us so beautifully human is those intense emotions because that's what motivates us always it's like people don't it's like the filmmakers today not all of them but some of them maybe just underestimate that their audience has the capacity and wants Absolutely. to be identifying. They think, oh, everyone just wants to escape and watch chases and violence and whatnot. But like it, to me, it's just so rare to have um, to actually connect with a film. And you've done that in your films, yeah. yeah. A well, perfect ending, which oh. Nicole cast mm. me in mm-hmm. as Paris. I have people from all walks of life in all kinds of random places come up to me and be like, I love that movie, I love yeah. your movie. And like the most unexpected people, like a shuttle bus from a studio, and it was like <laughs> it was like this Hispanic gentleman who was probably like 50, like straight, and he was like, oh, he was like, it's one of me and my wife's favorite movies. <laughs> and I was like, it gives me goosebumps, because I'm like, thank, thank like, you. Thank Thank you. Like you, like well, it's so emotional. Someone, um, Christy Kirby just uh, texted in. She said, "Loved Elena Undone and that kiss." <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Isn't that the long ass kiss that went on and on and on? Wasn't that a it's, very long one take kiss? I can't remember. Yeah, it's really yeah, yeah. Like it's record breaking. Yeah. Record breaking. Right, I remember <laughs> that one. Okay, I got to see this movie. Yeah, you need to see all her movies. We lesbians hold that record. Okay. Yeah. I, love, yes. I love the one that I saw at the Lesbian Gay Center a couple years. That was back a couple years ago with Brooke Elliott. Yep. More beautiful, more beautiful for her. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. good. I love Brooke Elliott. Yeah. She's yeah. so awesome. Oh, yeah. that was a dream cast. Let me tell you that that was that was a fun and wonderful dream mm-hmm. cast, especially little boy who yeah yeah Caleb represents my son. Yeah. Aww. Aww. yeah. So uh, it was great. Well, it's kind of funny because like a perfect ending. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Absolutely. Something? Because a perfect ending does something for people that I've never seen. <laughs> I had a projectionist from the UK, and I have a lot of straight male, older, like in their 70s and 80s gentlemen who love my movies in the UK. Projectionist, he said in his entire career, the best film he ever saw was A Perfect Ending. And he worked in that place for like five decades, you know? It just blew my mind. And then uh, a woman contacted me. She was doing healing with it. She watched it every day to get over the death with her mother. All this sort wow, of Wow, look what you do. But here's the best one. I get a contacted from a woman in Canada who's fucking blown away. And she's like, well, is there any way that I can help you? And so she sent, like, you know, several thousand dollars, and it was really wonderful, et cetera, et cetera. Her husband passed away. She was with him for 40 years. And abused for 40 years. Oh, and oh was God. a lesbian oh, no. underneath it all. And so he ended up leaving her a lot of money. And she funded the entire Coming Out for Love show. Oh, wow. wow. A perfect wow. ending Seriously, saved wow. her life. That's a, wow. Oh, that's oh. amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love that. That's so touching. That's amazing. Well, yeah. I was just saying, like, uh, for um, a perfect ending. Just Joe, we love you. Go ahead, say love you, okay? Just Joe. But I mean, I had not. That was probably the only one I hadn't seen, uh, and which one? a perfect ending. Oh, and I was at a friend's house, mm-hmm. and we were sitting there, and there was a few of us, 
and we were like going through and saying, what movie do we want to watch? It was, you know, whatever. And one of my friend's friends said, let's watch A Perfect Ending. And I'm like, what the hell is that? I swear to God, what is that one? And they're like, it's Nicole Kahn. And everyone said, oh, my God. And there's this woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you. Era. And I start, and it's so funny because I said, okay, fine. I, I said, I, I've seen all, even the 2019 one. I guess I missed that one. Okay, <laughs> let's watch it. And this must, may have been like their fourth or fifth time, you know? I mean, like I'm the generation that grew up and thought that like, like the first lesbian movies I saw were Desert Hearts, obviously, because my first one, you know, too. and um, oh god, Gina Gershom. Oh, bam. Bound. 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 So hot. Yes, so, so hot. hot. So, so those hot. were like yes. the first ones, and then of course all of yours. So we watched it, and of course, absolutely wow, wow to you. But then I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it, and I'm like. Oh my God, John Hurd! Yeah. I worked with him. Oh, and then Morgan Fairchild, I work with her too. So it was sort of interesting to see, you know, that I, I like your casting. I, I've always liked the people you've cast. Um, it's like I was just looking up just really quick, like Barbara Niven, right? Yeah. Like she's doing whole Hallmark movies. Yeah, and yeah. Shit. Oh, I love Barbara Niven. And I'm Niven. like, oh, yeah. there was. Some, I, love her. I wonder if she's putting a perfect ending on her resume because you know it's a fucking Hallmark for Christ's sake. But, um, but it's just, but I mean, it, it did make a huge impact on me, you know, as as all of your movies do. Now I know you, Jessica. You are married. Mm -hmm. And so is your wife, wife, I'm going to say wife, wife. Um, is she in the industry? Uh, she's an artist, a fine artist and a tattoo artist. Um, so how'd you meet? Uh, so we met at a girl party called Eden uh, in the basement under coffee shop in New York, which was like <laughs> one of the best girl parties at the time. And I was actually making out with this woman that I had started dating that I ended up being with for a very long time um <laughs> but anyway so i was apparently she saw me walk in and like clocked me walking down the stairs i walked over to this girl i started kissing this girl and she was like well that ain't right went up. <laughs> she went up to us and like separated us and said i wish i wish i was a fly in your bedroom wall oh, right ballsy. wow right nice wow. line oh i like that I with a smile that. too oh. like you know what i mean and like i knew that it was directed at me but my person at the time <laughs> thought it was directed <laughs> to both of us, oh. which was good because it meant that, like, I, you know, yeah. I wasn't in trouble. Like, right, no one was in right, trouble. Right, it was right, just right. like a fun, sexy, like, cool, whatever. Like, um, but I definitely clocked her, and I definitely clocked her energy. And for me at the time, I was like, mm, you're. I'm trying to like get into my, you know, <laughs> I was trying to get to the suck. So the first half of my model life is like starvation and cocaine, right? And then the second <laughs> half. <laughs> the, uh, the, <laughs> It was the knots, what yes, can I tell yeah, you? That's true. Um, and then the second half was all like, you know, uh, sushi and salads and working out right. and everything else. Um, and so I was just starting that like second half and I was like, mm, like you're clearly like still super fun and like in the in the nightlife thing or whatever. So I was like, mm, no, thank you. Um, but we always kind of saw each other peripherally, were always very respectful, nothing like that, but I liked her. She was like really positive, she smiled, mm -hmm. she treated people really well, like all of that stuff is really important to me. Mm -hmm. um, I moved to LA, unbeknownst to me, she moved to LA. Uh, my ex and I break up. I am on my girlfriend's couch. She makes me go to this new trendy bar. I don't wanna go, it's a straight <laughs> bar. I'm there and Ruby walks in. And yeah, and like, li yeah, and so, oh, no, I even forgot. No, you don't even know no, this. So, <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> so that was two days after the premiere of A Perfect Ending. Oh my okay. God, no way. So, and A Perfect Ending had its after party, after, after, sorry, I uh -huh. keep switching, mm -hmm. um, had its after party at the writer's room in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, and m Ruby was still bartending occasionally sometimes. She used to bartend in New York. And so they called her in and they're like, you have to come, like it's a lesbian party. She's like, I don't wanna go, I don't like with the lesbians, they're mean to me. <laughs> I don't like lesbians. She's like, they're mean. Like, I don't give like me the, those lesbians. She's like, give me the, the straight crowd. And they were like, totally. get your butt in here. Um, so she was actually um, behind the bar um, when I got there and my manager late and I said, hi, whatever. And, you know, 
Um, and then my manager lady was like, who is that woman? And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, there's something about her. My, she, my manager's also a lesbian, right? just to preface that. Power lesbian, but yeah. So we so we had a little thing there, like a, just a moment, and then two days later, she walks into this straight bar. Oh. Um, yeah, and then, then was... she was making out with me at the end of the night. Okay. And then, nice. You know, then I resisted for like five more days, and I was like, oh, fuck it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's no resistance in Aries. We go after what we want. That, no kidding, no kidding. Like, it was like, people, I like, she, she's like, I didn't, like, I didn't even hit the market. You know what I mean? Like, right. my manager was oh, like, yeah. literally nobody even knew you were single because, yeah. like, you were single, you were staying with your straight girlfriend, Ruby saw the opportunity, swooped yeah. up, and that was it. Like, that's an Aries that, that is full Aries. Yeah. I love it. Yes. I love it. Like, I'm a lot, like, I'm very tall, as yeah. you said several times. I have a very deep voice. Like, I'm a act, you know, I'm a lot. And, uh, Air, you know, she is can she handle tall? that. Are I'm she, trying to find a she picture of her. Is the, you know what I think of her as like the most noble butch woman I've ever laid eyes oh, on. Oh, she's butch. That's awesome. Well, for oh, me, yeah. I love the butches. <laughs> for oh, me, yeah. Yeah. she's who I want to be when I grow up. Ah, she's like so this. great. I just want to tell you this one cute story. Mm -hmm. It was when Jessica was being particularly nice to me on the set the last day. Was I being she nice was, or was I being upset? You were very upset. <laughs> okay. I was like, I feel like I sense some sarcasm here. <laughs> just wanted to clarify. So um, after I was sitting there shaking in my boots because Jessica had had her way with me. <laughs> and she hadn't eaten. She was about to faint. I actually, oh, no, really, they had Thank to catch you. me. I did yeah. this. No. Oh. And Ruby, Ruby comes over and me. she says, Nicole, you can't talk to her. She hasn't eaten. That's all. You just have to know that. And I said, okay. And she's like, do you need a big butch hug? And I'm like, yeah. Aww. Aww. So sweet. And uh, when I see your, oh, your wife's face. Yeah. Aww. Your wife's face to me is like so, she's so beautiful. I love her. She has that noble thing in her high cheekbones and everything. Yeah, she's really amazing. You guys are great together. Thank now you. the turbo's saying to you, are you in I a relationship? Like no. <laughs> so, yeah, so she's she's been married to coming out for love for quite some yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, have you ever been married, Nicole? No, but I was engaged, but that didn't quite work out because of coming out for love. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, no, um, I'm single right now. Yes, because that's the way to be. Just Thank yeah. you very much. Not, yeah. not for want saying. of other women trying. Just <laughs> yes. Right, yes. right, right. You, you yeah. know, by choice. This is Nicole Kahn we're talking about. I do have a very sort of specific list. You know, I just want somebody to have sex with them, binge TV on the weekends, and then go do their life, and I stay in my life. You know what? I, I, okay. Amen. I, I, amen. I, I, amen. I, I, I well, am. You know what? <laughs> when I was in my younger, I mean, I was always a, a serial monogamist. I was in a seven-year relationship, had a few months available. It didn't really do much. Then got into an 18-year relationship. Mm, yeah. Then I didn't want that anymore. And then it's been, it's been shit ever since. Like from 20, I swear from 20, whatever it is, 20, <laughs> God. Broke up with her in 2000. No, oh God, it's been too long. <laughs> anyway, it's been, not, it's been hit and miss along the way, but nothing ever. And now I'm, like in December, I'll be turning 60. And someone said to me, what I mean, why why aren't you? I mean, why aren't you with somebody? Mm -hmm. You you know you've got you know, you've got all the fucking check marks, mm -hmm. and I said, first I really don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, it's not like I people know I'm single, but no one comes after me. I'm okay with that. But it's like the need to be in that. I don't have that need oh, anymore. Oh, I don't either. When yeah. you're when you're at this age, it's like I know what I want and I know what I don't. Want. Correct. Right. Yeah. And there yeah. are a lot of check marks. And if you and trust me, I've I've tested the water on occasion after this, and it's like fucking lesbians are crazy, and That's what I'm they're saying. fucking yes. crazy, <laughs> and and you know, and I don't know why, but they're crazy. Well, you know who else are crazy? Who? Straight women that you try to marry when they've been straight their whole life and you, you know, my last two, my oh. ex-fiance, my ex-marriage, straight women who had never been with a woman. All right, see, so here's the thing that I repressed. learned very early on mm -hmm. yeah. is don't touch the straight women because, Facts. yeah, because they will mind fuck you. Be and that's another thing for my own ego. It's one thing if you want, a, if you date a lesbian because the pool that you are competing against is just 
lesbians. I do not believe a straight woman that wants to be a lesbian because then for my ego, well, now I got to fucking like deal with she likes guys and she likes girls. And that pool's too goddamn big for me to deal with. Well, that's because because you're just supposed to have fun with them, not try to marry them. You guys are generalizing, though. You're you're generalizing. You're generalizing completely. I'm not saying all of them. But it's by erasure. (laughs) It is. There's a lot of, you know. know. My (laughs) second wife, Marina Rice Vader, who was Mm -hmm. the exec producer of A Perfect Ending, Mm -hmm. She was a wonderful wife, you know. We, were, I mean, we were not married, married, but we were basically In a long married. Yes. married. We had kids families, together. Yeah, yeah. We and she was previously kids. of the straight identity. Yeah, she's yeah. never been. She, mm-hmm. she and I are Elena and Dan. Elena, I was going to say. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, right. okay, okay, right. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's just I don't know why. All, all I know, part of it is, is because I'm into super fans. And a lot of lesbians aren't super femmes mm. because of all the discussions that we have in the show about, right. you know, all the dirty words in our community like bisexual. Yep. Yeah. And we talk about these things and it's really, really fun because this is, these are the conversations we're having. I, I did notice awesome. on, on Coming Out for Love in the first episode that I think it was Sean Sh- Shaba. No. Shaba, which we know she's a friend yeah. of ours. Shaba, Shaba, Shaba. Wait, wait. Here, you want to say hi? She's ringing me. Oh yeah. my god, she's ringing us. Shaba. Shaba. Shaba, I didn't know you were on this. Shaba, Shaba. 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 <laughs> 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 anyway, I know. Wait, wait, wait. hold on. What do you need, honey? We're at the radio station doing You're on the, the air. Tristan with Aries. Somebody just. Mara Shane. Mara Shane just said, I know Shaba the moment you called. That <laughs> was crazy. That? You guys are meant for each other. Tr- <laughs> <laughs> Shaba, it's Tristan. No, we're not, because my car broke down and the tables are in my car. Tell us, no, no, they're on the side of the street, no? <laughs> no, they're in my car. Oh, Remember shit. I Let loaded them the right before we went in? Sorry. No, it's okay. You were, sp- were going to text Chase with that, right? Sorry, guys. <laughs> we're on the air. I got to go off. Sorry. Bye, Shaba. <laughs> don't you think? Anyway. Just- hold on, Sheena. Hold on. Go ahead, Sheena. Don't you think that we spend so much time as women, and this, you know, worried about we don't like this one and we don't like that one and we won't take this one and we won't i don't like this don't you think that we should just all sort of band together yes I mean, yes yes who you want to date is a very specific thing right we all have a list of what we like and don't like in a person many of those questions if we were straight would be the same things we would ask about men mm-hmm. it's personality right. things spiritual mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. political things we spend so much time like, I don't want to date the femme, I don't like the butch, I don't like the buys. Or in your you know, case, it's the Aries or the... Women, all these crazy things it's people science, say, It all it does as women is bring us down. Instead of us all getting together and rallying together and lifting us up. If you don't like femme women, then don't date them. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to constantly make a statement that, oh, they don't belong, look at them with their lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we need to just stop yeah. being at each other's throats yeah. all the time. Not great. just as, a, as queer women, but just as women, women in general. Why don't we just, like, you know, sisters are doing it for themselves. Why don't we just lift each other up? And it just, there always seems to be so much... I don't like this and I don't like that. And I Mm. saw that. I had a, I dated a woman for over a decade who was very femme. And, um, you know, we would go into bars and she would get kind of harassed. Yeah. And I, it's like, you know, she would always say like, they never think I'm one of them. Um, it's, it's very strange how we, we as human beings, right, naturally want to create this us and them over and over again. Mm. And I think we should just all love each other and, Whoever you decide you want to date, whoever you have that chemistry with, fantastic. But maybe we don't need to always lead out the gate with, I don't like this and I don't like that and I don't want this. Because all we're doing is cutting other women down, you know? Yes. That's that's actually something like the Coming Out for Love really, really focused on. Mm -hmm. Um, And we absolutely... in, in our diversity, we didn't just think about ethnic diversity or, you know, Michelle being deaf. And we like we really mm-hmm. tried to represent the the spectrum of queer women. And we also were completely open to having non-binary folks as well. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. the people that we auditioned weren't the right fit age wise and things yeah. like that mm-hmm. for the current casting. Mm-hmm. But like in the show, for example, we address, you know, stud on stud. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. and how like that's the thing that like is tremendous.
tremendously taboo in our community, but yeah. it's just as legitimate as femme on femme or exactly. any other combination, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And so, and... Yeah, oh, I'm just gonna say, please. and it's so beautiful to see Sunny D, one of my favorite people in the human Fan phrase, favorite. Um, and Amber, when they do this sort of, they do this tango, this butch v butch tango sort of thing, and it's so beautiful. And the stuff that comes out of Sunny, the that delicious woman that comes out of her is just, mind-blowing well what i was about to say about shaba was that when she came out on episode one and you know introduced mm -hmm. herself to the group mm -hmm. i liked how she asked okay what how do you identify uh -huh. like she proposed the question right. so that it wasn't like we're all lesbians mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. which is fine but yeah. she did give everyone a chance mm -hmm. to say how they yeah we very much you know. wanted that. Mm -hmm. We wanted because everyone, like when people ask me, I honestly say I'm a queer lesbian and everyone's like, what do you mean? And it's like, cause I feel like I straddle generations mm -hmm. a little bit. So coming out for me, lesbian, right? Mm -hmm. But but I have always felt queer in the sense that, um, you know, all women, like to me, all women are women, trans women mm -hmm. are women, non-binary, like all of everybody is however they express in themselves. I love all of my community. You know, I, um, I fall in love with women, uh, but I, want love and the most important love that we have is the love in our community and our chosen family and things like that and so I really like seek that out and want that and that was one of the things that really bonded me to the to the project as well yes you yeah. know because I do think Beautiful. there is to, to say to, to Sheena's point um, there's so much divisiveness there's so much yeah. and and you know literally that's a divide and conquer strategy so long as we're fighting amongst ourselves mm -hmm. about arbitrary definitions like Absolutely. that it keeps us distracted from the wider goals as somebody that lives part-time in Florida right now you know what I'm saying <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. we got bigger problems you yeah. know it, it's true because we, we do need to be more accepting I, I totally agree with Sheena because a lot of bisexual women and they get a bad rap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who cares if if somebody is attracted to both sexes? If if to them love and sex is fluid, just love and accept the person. You don't have to be one way, straight, gay, bi. I mean, just accept the person for exactly who they are, how they want to identify, how they want to express themselves, mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. physically and like verbally. Just love and accept people. Like, I just think that's what this world needs to be about. Hold on, Rachel's pretty quiet. I want Rachel to say mm -hmm. something, because she, I know we, we've talked about this. Uh, everyone, this is Rachel, she's shy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, shy Rachel. Hi. I'm a cancer. cancer. What cancer. sign are you, Nicole? Scorpio. Scorpio. Oh, I'm a and I'm a very triple Scorpio. I'm a quadruple Aries. Oh my oh God! Fucking <laughs> mine for Christ's sake! Cancer. I, I'm a very femme lesbian who came out only 15 years ago, and I love the Bachelor Nation too. So oh. there you go. <laughs> but did you find it hard, like in like for example, you know, I know you were married. Yes. I know you have two beautiful daughters. Yes. Um, you know, did you know you were always gay? You know, hindsight's always yeah. twenty twenty. I mean, I would have crushes. I didn't really know what they were. Um, I always wanted to know what it was like to kiss a woman. And then when I finally did, it was like, uh-oh. <laughs> and, and that was the end of my marriage. So, <laughs> <laughs> but did but like was it very difficult for you in your life to, to to at like a later age having this established relationship, sort of you know, make that transition, like with your family, with your children? For me, it was very seamless. Like, I had a lot of support in my family. Um, my aunt was gay. She was in an over 55-year relationship with her oh, partner. Wow. So I had that as a role model mm -hmm. in a time where you couldn't be gay. You right. could yeah. not be out or you yeah. would be fired or kicked mm -hmm. out of your apartment or whatever. Um, so for me, it was pretty seamless, and my kids were pretty young at the time. So, the, you know, they didn't know and... Um, they handled it, I think, pretty well. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate. I think I'm more fo fortunate than most. Um, friends, my community, I have more gay friends now than I do straight friends. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it's. Okay, I just want to get your I perception on things. Plus, you were really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Though. Can I just? So, I Please. actually do um, understand why wh where women like you come from when you're like, I don't date, you know, straight women and things like that. Because uh, I think traditionally, like, yeah, you do get burnt. Like, they would leave like, and like get, you know, go and have kids with a dude or but whatever. This is my experience. Okay, I just wanted to make it very clear that I just a lot of times when I speak. And if anybody knows me, I speak from experience. I don't like to make generalizations. In my experience, mm -hmm. yeah. that has been 
the case, whether my friends have been, you know, had their heart broken and I'm sitting here picking up the pieces, you know, and I guess from my generation, you know, yeah, you're right. The women would come into the bars. Mm -hmm. Their husbands would be sitting at the end of the end of the bar, and it was kind of fucking creepy. You yeah. know what super I mean? It was creepy. just super yes. fucking creepy. And exactly. it's like you know, but at least those type of people, you know, what they were there right. for. Mm -hmm. But then there were the other type that the woman would be the decoy. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I, this has happened not to me, thank God. But you know, they would go home with the woman. And the guy would be there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe it's a different generation. I don't know. But, you know, look, if I, if I, if I, right now, I mean, I'm not, I'm not actively looking, but I'm not opposed to it because I'm comfortable where I am right now. You know, I think when I was younger, I think there was a need to be coupled. I was just going to say, we don't need anymore. We mm -mm. just want. You know, yeah. So it's not, it's and I'm fine with long distance. I am so fine with long distance. I am fine with not living together, you know, because it's not, that doesn't make a couple. Mm -mm. That doesn't make a perfect couple or Usually happiness. It unmakes a couple. It unmakes mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's sort of like when, you know, when people go, I have a perfect relationship. We don't fight. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong then? You know, something's right. wrong. Because you can't take two people. And you're not carbon copy of each other, you know? And my other thing is I am very independent. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, my, my partner is not my appendage, nor do I expect them to think I'm theirs, mm -hmm. you know? So it really is, um, you know, I'm just looking for someone, much I think like you, as we were mm -hmm. talking about, I just want someone that's independent, yeah. you know, that I'm in love with, they're in love with me, but we respect, we respect each other, and uh, you can have your life, mm -hmm. I can have mine, because the bottom line of any relationship is trust. Mm -hmm. yes. And if you trust someone, it doesn't fucking matter mm -hmm. if you don't see them every day, if you don't live with them every day, yeah. it doesn't fucking matter. It is all about trust. Mm -hmm. Exactly. My opinion. Exactly. And it's like well, when when we're older. Right. Thank you. Yeah. When we're older, it's like when we know what peace feels like. Yeah. Why mm. do we want to go to drama? Mm -hmm. And in long distance, you know, I've, I've never done it before. And I did it for a couple months. And it would have worked out great. But to, both people have to be mature enough and trust. Both, But both people both need people. to be okay with a long distance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because, you know, it's so funny because I was with someone that I cared about very deeply. And so did she. But she kept trying to sabotage the relationship because she could not deal with long distance. Mm -hmm. And I kept trying to talk her into it. <laughs> That was what I just got out right. of. Yeah. And, just got and, out and of. we're still good friends. That's Horrible. another thing. I am friends with all my exes. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not anymore. <laughs> They're yes, done. I am. I'm not. Yes, I am. My uh, wife is as well. All of them. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's, but it's. She'll grow out You know, because, worry. you know what? But you, no, no, no. I, I did. I'll <laughs> explain. Because every relationship, every relationship, at least for me, that I had. Okay, the breakup was a mature breakup. Yeah. There wasn't cheating. There wasn't manipulating. There wasn't control. There was none of that toxicity. It's just that we grew apart. Mm -hmm. It's just that we grew apart. Our, you know, like my, the one that I was with for eighteen years. Mm -hmm. um, she was eleven. She is eleven years older than me. You know, when I was in my F f mid 40s you know what a uh, 2009 whatever however I, i'm bad with math so however i was an old in 2009 <laughs> a lot of shit was coming my way i had a lot of stuff on a bucket list and it's just like the universe just was giving it to me boom like the podcast and then i had a music radio show and then i was the head of um the vp of entertainment for gay pride and so everything that sort of was on my bucket list to do was just coming at me and i was never home yeah. and you know, and she never, but the thing is, she never stopped me. Mm -hmm. I always tried to include her. She just wasn't, she's not an entertainment person. Mm -hmm. I obviously am not as shy as she is. Um, I like to be the spotlight. But, you know, it's just, again, you know, my life was taking me one way. She didn't want it to hold me back. So we sort of broke up. Now, of course, like all lesbians, there's always one lesbian that you really care about and love your whole entire life, but you don't want to date them anymore. And that is this woman. And she is, you know, when my mother moved in with me um, in 2015, I took care of her and she passed oh, a so couple of years ago. Um, you know, the one person that had my back and the one person 
that said, if you want me to move back in to help you, oh, was wow. this woman. Wow. And, you know, and I am so grateful. So after my mother passed, she goes, do you want me to move out? I'm like, fuck no, stay in, you dumbass. Aww. But, you know, it's but it's become a sisterhood. It's that's become love. family, yeah. and that's love. That's love. You know, that, and it's, you know, and it's like people, well, why don't you get back together with her? Because it's morphed into something yeah. much more mm-hmm. deeper mm-hmm. than, like, you know, a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying. It's I sort love of that. love. It's, it's beautiful. love. You know, beautiful. and then love can be pure. You know, there could be sex love. Yes. Or just like you have all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Typical I tried, Aries. I tried for two months. Long distance. Love him and leave him. <laughs> Tristan. Um, I tried. <laughs> you know, um, but not judging. <laughs> I remember I was talking to somebody who had said, you know, in 2019, I, you know, came, I was back out in the community because I revamped the show. And I'm, uh, you know, <clears throat> that's where I found these people. And <laughs> I said, yeah, you these can join people. me, these, these people. people. <laughs> and I wanted to revamp the show because it had kind of been dormant for a little bit. And I said to the universe, you know, please, if this is supposed to be, he, I taught, I mean, I called Tony right away. And he's like, I always wanted you to be on my network. I'm like, well, I think if I get a spot for me, you know, and then everything just came together. Mm. And I remember at that point now, I'd have to restart the promotion and re, re you know, high well, between the sheets. We were, we were really popular, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was out there, and one of the OG lesbians come up. She goes, did you just move here? I said, I have been gayer. <laughs> And the gayest gay person since 1985. <laughs> I have been here since 85. Well, where the hell have you been? Have you been, you know, you were not straight? Did you go on that path? I'm not, no. I said, I was just in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, and I'm like, well, what is it? and they were talking about, I said, look, I've only slept with seven people. They're like, seven? What is wrong with you? I said, I know. I said, I feel so weird. You know? <laughs> but you have to make up for lost time, which I never did. But <laughs> well, it's never too late. It is never too late. Never say never. Never time. too late. <laughs> and you can start with the orgies. Also, oh, no. retirement homes are a hotbed of sexual activity. So. And, really? se- and sexual oh, yeah. disease. STDs. <laughs> Run yeah, that. Who cares? All the they things. Are. Ladies that never knew they oh were my gay. god! Exactly. How oh, fun. and I, I, we know so many of them because of uh, Nicole's films. Like, uh-huh. so many women have been like, "Hi, I'm gay now." Like, <laughs> and I'm like, "This is so awesome." But like, a photographer I worked with, she emailed wow. me and she was like, "You know, you were just like so relaxed about being gay." I was like, "Yeah, maybe I could be gay too." You know, like it's all of your films that it really does. It's I need to hang of- out with y'all. <laughs> Yeah. Doesn't sound like you have too much difficulty. No, no, she does. <laughs> she's yeah. she's fine. Up. He's fine. Yeah. He's fine. <laughs> oh my god. So what's on the horizon? Let's start with Nicole. What's on the horizon? I mean, what do you have any projects? Do you have anything sort of um, you know that's in pre pro or, or things that you're going to go into? I'm trying to survive this show. Okay. <laughs> How many episodes is it? 16. It's six. Oh, that's, that's a, a lot. lot. Oh. You never get that nowadays. <laughs> yeah. And they're an hour, about an hour each. Yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. There's no commercials, is there? Well, there are, there are, are what I call interstitials. Oh, okay. And, you yeah, know, yeah. like when we had Stoney Michelle Love on, uh-huh. from Studio Clothing, we put her, they have really wonderful commercials. We put them in. And anybody else that has that, we put in for them. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, we're doing the one thing I'm really, really super excited about because, you know, in the micro indie filmmaking business, which I'm in, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you, you have to reinvent yourself so many times because of the technology and then now the Internet and then ad rev share, which has destroyed us. And my, uh, my quick illustration, my last film has over eight million views on a, a ad rev share site. Right. Wow. I'm Can you let, what's an ad rev share again? Meaning you're making a, a one millionth of a cent for every view. So oh, you have to ma- you have to be like um, Marvel mm-hmm. to make anything. It's called stacking pennies um, for micro indie people. Even if somebody saw it eight million times for free, we don't see that. Mm-hmm. So then that destroys us financially. Right? I see. So with coming out for love, what we're doing is we're saying we <laughs> created this rainbow playground. Everybody come to the a game and to the playground and play nice together and you all make money you have a coupon code you send it in to your people you make money off of that you give them 10 percent off you make 25 percent. we're doing that because we want as much of the community and straight resources as well to be involved come to the table mm-hmm. 
because our our um, goal is to find an antidote to ad rev share for right. people who are creating content. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. And um, it's also to make more awareness for coming out to love because we're, we're doing the Tyra model. Um, that's one of the reasons we're looking at Brazil for season two because um, it would start with, you know, Jessica would co-host with somebody for like three or four of the episodes. Mm -hmm. And then we go on to another place and another place because for the, besides the English speaking, UK, America, Australia, et cetera, countries don't have this kind of, you know, this kind of thing. So right. they really need it from that standpoint. It's year, light years ahead for them. Right. So there's a lot of ways in which we can deal with that because we're not struck by a distributor who says, well, we have Europe, but not Spain. And we have this, mm -hmm. but not that. Anybody <coughs> from all over the world can come to comingoutforlove.com. And right. anybody who wants to be a brand ambassador can be a brand, <coughs> brand ambassador. <laughs> come one, come all. <coughs> I love that. Yeah. So Rainbow Playground is our, our test ground for what happens if our community all gets together and works together. Everybody makes some money. I would like Coming Out for Love, comma, the celebrity edition. Okay. I also <laughs> would like Coming Out for Love, comma, the menopause edition. <laughs> <laughs> there Thank have you. been many requests for that one. And really? I yes. want, and by in the way, my social media. I like, want to be in that one. Okay. I know. These ladies, <laughs> the, these people on your show, um, they're so young, man. I mean, I like them, but I almost feel dirty for liking them because they're so much younger mm, than me. Not all of them are that young, What's actually. What's the age bracket? What's the de age demographic? I'm like 20 it's 24 24 five. and 39 yeah. 40 yeah. 40 i think okay. so yeah. that, that's a pretty i guess is yeah. the next one going to be older no older? but i want to do a like femme v femme yeah and yeah. i want to do we were talking about um desert island where you throw everything in the kitchen sink yeah in. so like the ultimate gay dating show basically mm -hmm. where you know you really em um, embrace the the queer umbrella of lgbtq and you know everyone can look for like you have multiple leads and like everyone is a potential love match mm -hmm. so kind of really uh trying to embrace the fluidity more and seeing if that's organically what people do or if people uh go into very sort of traditional butch fam or whatever hmm. so yeah it depends i mean there are certain ethnicities <clears throat> that still believe it or not maybe it's just the old school still go into the butch femme role. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, a lot. Look, I mean, I'm a butch. I mean, a li like. A soft butch. Long live <clears> butches. <throat> yes. Thank I love you. a butch. <laughs> Me Do you too. know who Robin Tyler is? Of course. Yeah, Robin was on the show, the, our last show, mm -hmm. and she was like, and she stated, you know, she goes, I was not very popular in my crowd because I was a butch and I liked butches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. very. That, yeah. uh, that yep. was San Francisco mm -hmm. for me. That mm -hmm. was what happened up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> butch with butch. Yeah. I'm a femme and I like femmes. Yeah. Yeah, or, exactly. More androgynous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I like femmes. I mean, I don't. Look, it's for me personally, this is for me. I'm not attracted to a masculine looking woman, mm -hmm. but. There's what do they call them? Sporty butches? Sporty spice. Sporties. That they still Sporty Spice. Sporty Spice. Butches. Sporty Spice. Is that what they call them? The Feminine Tom, butches. butches. Tom yes. I'm a spice. That's I'm a what I like. Fam. I mean, yeah. I don't <laughs> and then it, it's so funny because like yeah. but yeah. they can't be a hundred they can't be more feminine than me because I've got to have the feminine bar. But I uh, so I like them to look like women. You know what I mean? Handle you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to handle. I know. Yeah, oh, I, I can tell. Um, but <laughs> I really like you. It's a lot to handle. But it's. You know. But you know what? But it, it's. But I like the. Ma I like the energy because I am. I mean, I'm assertive. I, I'm in a. I'm in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. I have to be very assertive. You know, notice me. Notice me. Notice me. Not because I'm a lesbian, but I'm a woman. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I come off really. But I. I am very. As, as most people know, I am very soft. Mm -hmm. I mean, not like pathetically soft you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but softer you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. there, okay, there's nothing pathetic about being soft no yeah. i'm a little hard ass but i'm i'm so sensitive right. it's unreal yeah. correct <laughs> correct but it's sort of like but you know I, I just you know i just don't want to in my relationship mm -hmm. you know be like I am in my office. Yeah. I don't want to be a producer. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, I don't want to take over. I would mm -hmm. like s once in a while for my partner to be able to, you know, spoil me, mm -hmm. you know, be that softer. So that's what I mean by I sort of like that mm -hmm. sporty masculine 
energy because I sometimes w- I want to be taken care of because I'm fucking tired of mm-hmm. taking care of everybody Reciprocal. else. Reciprocal. Yeah. Remember that Reciprocal. show? Yeah, but um, what show. there's a difference between being sporty and being strong enough inside to take care of you because there's a lot of masculine presenting women and a lot of men who are certainly they look real tough at the sports yeah. bar yeah but you get them at home and they can't do jack shit i always so, oh, say yeah. that really? i'm like oh yeah. i'm like be you know very I mean? careful so i think i think you know you have to separate someone's look and appearance from what's, but, yeah. what's that's going why on. I, was I, I hear what yeah. you're saying sheena but a lot of butches that i've met the ones that identify as butch that look but they are now granted you know like Latins love me, so Latin butch women are very masculine, and they are, mm-hmm. you know, they are, they, you know, th- and that's not my type. Well, okay, my, my but, oh, oh sorry, I was just gonna say my wife presents as very butch, and people mm-hmm. think she's quite scary looking, which I don't understand because she's like <laughs> really? always smiling. Well, she's covered in tattoos mm-hmm. and like you but know, that's not like butch. She's no, 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 she's butch. Oh. Trust me. Like, well, she's tomboy. <laughs> like, does she okay. have the she's dread? A Tom- picture. Mm-hmm. I saw. Okay, yeah. I saw her. She's so cute. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she has swag, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. she has a whole energy. So for me, I'm a lot, and I'm a performer, and I walk around in outfits like this. Right. But I'm actually really bad socially, and she's amazing. And like, we'll go to these like fancy like events, and she'll know everyone, and I'm just kind of like, hi, like you know. So it's yin yang. So it's yin yang, but she's very. <laughs> feminine inside like her person like she's like she's a Mm -hmm. lady you know i always yeah and i always laugh because like i'm kind of masculine really and she's like a lady and so like you know and so it's being able to see that and recognize we match well because i'm more masculine than i look and she's more feminine than. well that's what that brings up the point i was gonna say i'll give that to you sheen i'll give it to you um about i'll give it to you thank you dan thank you i just think what's really I don't mean to cut anybody off, but I just think what's really sexy in a person is them presenting authentically. Like somebody Mm -hmm. who just knows who they are, they know how they want to present, and they're not afraid to do so. (laughs) And and so feminine, masculine, none of that matters to me. Are you just... Are you coming out with the tr- your inner truth? But like, you for example, I mean? like like Mara. Yes. Would you? You're you like Butch? Would you ever date a femme? Yeah. Um. Here's the thing I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> the thing I was trying to say is, wouldn't it be cool to have like that old dating show where you have contestant number one, two, and three oh, behind the, the game? game? The dating game. Yeah, behind the curtain, so you don't know. I mean, granted, yeah. and if they have a real low voice, but they could still be femme with a really low voice. I have voice. a really well, low voice. Yes. Low yeah, voice. So, she has a low voice. Yeah. Yep. You're so, typecasting. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying where you don't see the person mm-hmm. and you fall in love with what is inside. Um, I don't know. I think it has to do a lot with how you as a person um, identify and what that other person's going to bring out in you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How comfortable are, are, are you, is your femininity? Is it going to be threatened or, or is it going to gel or are you turned on by this person who's more feminine or less feminine? Blah, blah. For me, I like to, I tend to like women that look like boys. Okay. And, and there's nothing like wrong with that because that's what you like. But if, but would you be open to a woman? Ah, uh, that's what I'm saying. See, that's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think them. I should. I think yeah. I should be open to it. Yeah, I, I really but... should. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm afraid. No, that... I think it's like I think we don't, we don't. I don't want to have to be afraid to say I'm a butch who's mm-hmm. very right. motivated, motivated by fans. Usually, crazy ass fans. Okay, <laughs> uh-huh. so she's not crazy, kidding. but crazy is. Fun. Yes, it is. Yeah. Until it isn't. Right. right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like. We we need a stable mixed with a little crazy yeah. instead of crazy mixed with a little stable. Yeah. yeah you know yeah, what we yeah. do it's when balance. we say it's balance. I learned that after my last one. You know what? <laughs> we, you know what we do when we see red flags, right? We go right. I run. Oh my god. Go. There's gotta a gotta have it. Go. Gotta have it. <laughs> and that goes across the board with friends and women. I mean, it was like, oh, she appears to be a narcissist. <laughs> Let's hang out with her a little. <laughs> this is me. I want to see what personality disorder she has. Let me just hang out with her a little bit yeah. longer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what I was trying to get back to is that's, you know, the old dyke days that I grew up mm-hmm. in. Yeah, when we could say we were dykes, you know, and mm-hmm. that word wasn't awful. And then every five or six years, we adopt a new wor- mm-hmm. <laughs> word for ourselves. Mm-hmm. It cracks me up. Uh, so anyway, um, I remember when, does anybody remember Joanne Luland? Yeah. Okay. See, we're dating ourselves. Yeah. Um, she used to do a thing in like 1400 seat theater 
bring somebody out from the audience and ask the audience what number from one to 10 they identified at Butch Town. And the entire audience always was on the same number. So we do mm -hmm. uh, well, what would number? Well, if it, it would be like seven. Now, why would everybody of 1,400 women see this woman as a seven? Because you can feel it. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a real thing in our community. Mm. That's what she was trying to illustrate. And it still, unfortunately, can be and is. I mean, unfortunately. I mean, fortunately. Sorry, <laughs> fortunately, it can't. It, for, it, it is. It's like you know, you can see, and I still do it. You're like, we'll look at. I mean, I look at somebody on TV, and I go, oh, she looks. I think she's femme. And it's again, maybe it's mm -hmm. just the old school mentality, but you know, you know, now it's sort of perplexing because you've got a lot of different, like there's a lot of before it used to be L G B T. Oh, please, please, L G B in the beginning, wasn't it? Well, it was L G B L G B. No, I mean when I was on the board of Gay Pride, and that was 1999, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we still... we adopted the T. Yeah, that was the yeah. like around the first yeah. time yeah. we adopted yeah. the yeah. T. And because the transgenders never felt as part of our community, so they had their own pride. It was transgender pride. Mm -hmm. And in that year, they came to CSW at the time, LA Pride, and said, you know, in a way, we want to be included. I know, but what we've done, essentially, is by slivering ourselves like this. Mm -hmm. With we, all the letters? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why can't we all just be fluid? Yeah, but yeah, we can. That's definitely. what the cue is. The Q is queer or questioning if you're much younger, mm. but the Q is queer and the queer is the umbrella term that embraces everybody that that, okay, that chooses that? that exists outside of the heteronormative like framework yes, of the patriarchy. Nicole, variety. I think because they have to have, people want to have identity, identity va yeah. um, what's the word, reflected I, or I verified, I don't want, validated? I don't want to be the same as a white cis gay man. Like I'm not in any way. Their life, the way they walk through life has nothing oh, to God, do with no. me. No, whatsoever. I'm not saying no, but that. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I yeah. can't be categorized with them. Like every fiber, I'm getting angry right now in myself. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like oh, it, okay. that's how much it matters. Okay. <clears throat> There's the Taurus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I mean, like, but but, if my, but if, now if, now I sound really, old. but like if <clears throat> like when I was coming out, I mean, gay was the word, that right? Was the <clears throat> it was like gay. I never liked the word lesbian. It bothered me. Yeah, lesbian the same. bothered me. I thought me. it was separate, like separatist. Like I don't know. I just didn't like it. Didn't like the word. Yeah, I just don't. Yeah. I still don't like the word lesbian. I don't like Nobody it. Nobody likes the word lesbian. Yeah, Yet it's the most. I don't mind the word lesbian. It's, it's lesbian. The like words it. were always searched by the most commonly internationally because okay. that's straight men you doing it poor. no 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 <laughs> lesbian is the term most often identified to what we, women loving women in okay. terms of globally that's the term people use lesbians hate it they've hated it every yeah. since it began a lot of the butch girls i've gone out with don't like that to say they're lesbian. They hate that word. So what do they call themselves? She just said queer. Queer. The girl, queer. They would just say queer. Queer is the umbrella yeah. term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so. why can't we say gay? Like we can. Why did, you can. Why you did can we have gay. to separate gays just for men and lesbians just for women? Because men. We need to men. have a letter to represent yeah, men you. Did because it. men. <laughs> men did it. Yeah. Well, men yeah. did. I mean, there was I a like time. Gay. There was and a time. Gay. Good with Wait, gay. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, it means happy. Hey, look, yeah. there was a time in me in the 80s when I was here there were lesbian bars and men bars, and still at that time, we're not talking that long ago, mm -hmm. women were never welcome into gay guy bars, mm -hmm. and gay guy bars were never welcomed into women bars. Well, that's the yeah. thing that the straight universe sees us as exactly. lesbian and gay, but we're lesbian and gay. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. We don't. We unfortunately we do not support each other culturally or almost any other way other than fundraising for like HRC or you know. I think lesbians support gay men just fine. I don't think they support us back or stand I for us. Hundred percent. Hundred percent agree. Absolutely. I think we. The whole reason L is at the beginning, in my understanding, is because of the. Um, yeah. level of support that lesbians Correct. gave the gay men in the HIV yeah. and AIDS wow, crisis. I did that not is, know that. That is why that they is put relevant. the L yeah. first. Yeah. Like, mm. it's significant. However, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, we're still in a patriarchal society and because as we address mm. on coming out mm -hmm. for love, we're, we're in the LGBT communi community, but that doesn't mean we're in any way immune from everything else. We're not immune from mm -hmm. racism Correct. or prejudice or isolation or ableism or any of those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So... 
I lost my train of thought because my, my brain was going too fast. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it, it, it does it, that sometimes. I'm like, oh, yeah. Gay I, gay men don't support us as much you. as we support them. Thank 100%. you. One hundred percent. Yeah. So 100%. they like nothing. Nothing is developed with us in mind. They don't put any, any real element of their funding towards us, especially if you're Hispanic or, or African American. Right. You know, you're diminished even more. Like you're you're say, everything. Yep. They mm-hmm. like they have created an environment where they are relatively safe. Yep. We are not. That's it is so facts. true. Yep. I mean, and it's funny because, like, I mean, not that I ever saw the show, but, like, it's like queer, what is it, queer eye for the straight, straight guy? guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, they never did. No, queer as folk? You mean they're, no, they're, no, they're no, queer, queer eye, eye for the straight guy? They're all the white, guy. right? Yeah. No, no, not now. Time. Not that, this time. No, that, no, that's a, that's I'm a talking about the original. Queer eye for the straight But it's like, you Carson. know, it's like because everybody thinks a queer guy is so stylish. Yeah. You would never see, like, a queer, like, it would never be, like, queer gal you know because they think oh those lesbians right you know they're wearing italian tablecloths that are flannel as their outfit my yeah, my mom came i was like hosting uh uh new year's eve at the roosevelt a few years ago when i was on a tv show and whatever um and it was it was a gay night right um it was a queer lesbian whatever you want to call it and so the whole room's there everyone's dressed up everyone's having a great time my mom's there she's enjoying herself and she's she leaned over and she, my mom's like fairly like you know but she leaned in she's like well which ones are the lesbians <laughs> and i was like mommy they all it's, are it's like and she was like and she was like but where are the real lesbians because they didn't look in the way that mm-hmm. she and like her thing is still like mm-hmm. overalls yes. dungarees yeah, yeah. flannel <laughs> short hair yeah. like i'm like mommy i'm a lesbian like look at me you know what i mean i've been yeah. lesbian for a really long time you know yeah. and still that's her perception yes. you know so i do think that yeah that's why we're not, we're, we have no sense of humor right? right we don't know how to dress yeah, nope um we don't like have any taste. We don't can't shave. decorate we don't can't shave decorate. Mm-hmm. we don't wear shave. birkenstocks and socks Yep. Yeah. I mean, just like all the all the kids are doing that now. <laughs> yeah, no now they are. Now. Yeah, I know. I just sit there and the you go, kids totally took '90s lesbian style. And oh, just absolutely. Ran like, absolutely. I see it yes. everywhere. I'm like, this looks very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> As Shirley Bassey said, with the propeller heads, it's history repeating itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is one of my favorite songs, by the way. Um, Tony, how much time do we have left? Because I know we went on like four minutes okay um well i just want to say thank you both um you are were a great surprise and i appreciate you joining the panel and you thank you i am so happy we were able to make it work so quickly Mm -hmm. with you because it's like i said she said well she can call in no i don't want her to call does she never come to la yeah well i'll wait till she comes to la I said, I want her in person. Because you know what? Part of it is during COVID. Mm -hmm. We did everything during Zoom. And it just, it was, I know. You know, and I I just, now that we don't have to do that anymore, Mm -hmm. I just love the energy. I loved being in person with you, with you all. Thank you very much for having me. Well, thank you. So again, Nicole, um, where can people find you? Do you have a website? Do you you have, do you want fundraising? What do you want to do? What do you want from my people? We want you to all go to comingoutforlove.com and buy a bundle. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and it's worth like it's genuinely a fantastic show. I'm not it, just saying it, that it because is. I'm a host and I'm sitting at Nicole. Like <laughs> I'm so no, I'm so proud of it, and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And it's like it's inter- It's like it's it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Now, what were you saying about wait, before you were talking about um, <clears throat> like people getting together, branding? Or, like explain Brand what ambassadors. explain yeah. what that is very quickly. Basically, people who have lists. Um, we're doing this with a lot of promoters. We did it with the girls in Wonderland, women from um, yes, Orlando. Yeah. Love yeah. them. Um, and yeah. they basically get a coupon, whatever they're what they want in caps, and they go to their people and say, "You get ten percent off any bundle." And the bundles mm. give you the whole 16 episodes. I mean, right now they're dro- dropping week by week, mm-hmm. um, but and each one gives you extra stuff depending on what bundle you get. Got and it. And if you don't want to do that, you can run them uh, by 1.99 an episode kind mm-hmm. of thing. Okay. But anybody who goes on your coupon, you make the 25% on. So it's essentially we're doing it with a, a nonprofit who contacted us because they'd seen the first episode, and they were just so blown away that they they were like your your mission is everything that we're about so what we want to do is be brand ambassadors and we want to use our charity to be you know the recipient of the 25 percent. so that's basically who's your uh, and, and who's your publicist is it mona is it mona Mona's, okay yeah mm-hmm. mona's amazing yeah. yeah i've worked with mona for, great. you know for yes forever, forever. yeah well, thank you. And you are you on Instagram? Are you on Facebook? Uh, yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Nicole Khan. Yeah. <clears throat> Nicole Khan Films Global. Sorry. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> It'll pop right up with yeah. Nicole Kahn. Yeah, there's, there's only one yeah. Nicole Kahn. There's only one Nicole When Kahn. you put the word lesbian. <laughs> lesbian. Lesbian. No. And it's just the only one out there. <laughs> Prolific les- lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jessica, what is on, besides the show? Uh, what yes. else is on your horizon? Um, well, we're all about to go on strike, uh, SAG after, which I am fully in support, and of the WGA and every everybody like that. You think that. it's a for sure? I know y'all voted that we're going to do it. I can't say it's for sure. I'm not. I'm not. But party you all to that voted to say it's oh, you're going to strike if it e- doesn't come up. Ev- with a- every. I, they're not going to give us a deal. Yeah, no. They're not. Come on now. Um, with our one one cent residual checks, they're not going to give us a deal. Um, so I fully expect to go on strike. Um, I am still auditioning. There are some projects, you know, for Canada and things like that. Um, but mostly for right now, I'm focused on High Art Tattoo, which myself and my wife co-own. We have a studio in Los Angeles. We have a studio in St. Pete, Florida. And we also have one of the only ones in the country, um, a Class A converted luxury studio. I heard studio. about that. Yeah. Come so, to my house. I need more. Well, we do We do <laughs> private parties. But oh, you do? We do, absolutely. Maybe for but my 60th you birthday. You should. We're, we're fantastic mm-hmm. for big events. And Where we have is amazing... High Art Tattoo? So, high, it... so in Los Angeles, yeah. it's in Mid-City. It's on West Adams. Okay. Yeah, right in the middle of everything. Really easy to get to. So it's queer owned. Um, it's really run with that in mind. Uh, a lot of our artists are are part of the community. Um, we have a ton of women as clients because our whole thing is a safe space um, and anybody can come. We have women that work on the mastectomy scars. We have people that come and get chest pieces oh, wow. after top surgery. We have gay men that come and get gay mermen on their arms because <laughs> when they go into straight shops, people laugh at them and I'm, they're like, but I have a thousand dollars and we're like, sit, sit down. Sit we'll down. give you the gayest <laughs> merman you could possibly find, you know? So we really want, because tattoo uh, places can be very intimidating and loud and straight men and it's uh, and so we're a completely different um, high end, high art experience. So I'm really focusing on developing that um, as I'll have more free time on my hands. So my question is, <laughs> you're SAG, right? Yes. So, you, uh, so if you guys go on strike, can you work outside of the United States or is the SAG agreement universal? So, I mean, um, international. So we, no, we have other um, unions. So in the UK, it's equity. Okay. Um, and then, but so most of our unions are not striking but they are in support of the american strike so the the writers in australia canada and america and sorry the uk they're not working for any american producers no american productions so like my auditions for example are uh on monday they're for an indie film because if it's if it's not studio and network it's different they're an indie film and then it's a canadian television show that won't be aired here so that those things are allowed um but but yeah the the general all the international unions are standing behind what's happening in Hollywood right now. Wonderful. Now, where could people find you on Instagram, Facebook? What's your handle? Uh, the Jessica Rose Clark. I know that sounds obnoxious, but Jessica is a very common name. Um, <laughs> so it's the Jessica Rose Clark. And then I would love it if you would follow High Art Tattoo as well, because it's our baby and we're really proud of it. <laughs> and we made, and we lasted through COVID and they shut us down for yeah. seven and a half months and we had to pay rent the whole time. Uh. So, so here's my question. If I want to get a tattoo and come to the st- studio to do mm-hmm. it, because I know you, mm-hmm. do I have to wait forever to go get it? Do I have to wait on the laundry list to get it done? Uh, we can make you an appointment depending on schedule. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. So I know you should come. I, I do. Con- I want- consultations are free. It's a really nice I really, place. I, I kind of know what I want. You know what you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I do? Okay. Yeah, come see us. Well, thank you both for joining us. Um, if you, and whenever you want to come back, come back and, and bring your wife. That would be so much fun to oh, have her on. Oh, thank you. We could just make it a big old... Bigger lesbian, lesbian. <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have Sheena Metal. Sheena, where can people find you? I am Sheena. I'm a psychic and a talk radio host and a bunch of other stuff. I'm at Sheena Metal spiritual.com and my social media is all just at sign Sheena Metal. Thank you, Sheena. Sheena is like the balance. Like I sit here and I spout my opinions because, <laughs> you know, the, and she'll go, hold on, sister. <laughs> <laughs> You're making generalizations. (laughs) (laughs) Always centers me. Um, Then we have Mara Shane. Hi. You (laughs) acted surprised. (laughs) You acted literally surprised (laughs) when I said your name as if you didn't fucking recognize (laughs) it. Who am I? I know. I was like, wait, what? I mean, if it was Tristan, you know, she's got two. She's a mind fuck that yeah. one. But your own name, 
Marla Shane. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay, so no, um, you can find my art. I'm an artist. Um, you can find my work at marashane.com is my website. That's Mara. Shane.com. <laughs> and then Instagram is Mara underscore Shane and Mara Shane Art, both on Instagram. Why, thank you. You're so <laughs> bloody welcome. And then we have Roxanne Rosen. You know what I love is that Tony has Roxanne Rosen 69. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tony, I haven't done 69 in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Two months. Two months. <laughs> it's been, yeah, a couple of months. So, um, if you're interested in anything acting entertainment, uh, you can find me, Roxanne Rosen, um, on Facebook. Um, Solar Tan, solar.tan on Instagram. I am doing massive hiring right now. I'm doing hiring um, throughout okay, the entire United States. Do not make this a States. fucking help wanted ad. Um, so, Solar. <laughs> If you want solar, you want a job in solar, mention this. Um, the you show know, the, is called Between the Sheets. <laughs> the show's name. <laughs> mention the show's name. You'll get a discount. And I'm hiring massively across the entire U.S. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Rachel. I'm not selling. Good. Well, I'm not <laughs> yeah, hiring. No. I'm selling. I'm not hiring. No, no, no. You're selling. I, I, I'm I, selling. So I have a charcuterie business. And, amazing. Um, it's amazing. I love charcuterie. Yeah, I love amazing. making charcuterie, and I can do small grazing boxes, small boards, um, large boards. I do small parties, uh, wine tasting. Um, I deliver locally in Southern California. If you are national, I can deliver, but non-perishable stuff. And I am on Facebook and Instagram for Rachel's Nosh Boards. You have a nice. website too, correct? Rachelsnoshboards.com. Thank you. Oh my Thank God, I'm you. hungry now. <laughs> I know. Dude, I'm so hungry. Yeah. Damn it, she comes to the <laughs> show. Why didn't you bring we could have just. We could have. I don't get a headphone. I can... uh, yeah. Oh. Okay, oh. bring food next time. You don't get the headphone. Oh. <laughs> Look, Kristen. You, Tristan, you don't even want to fucking share the speaker. <laughs> Microphone. I'm blocked by the whole thing. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tony Sweet. He's the owner of United Broadcasting Network. Um, I'm Gayan Bruno. Thank you again for joining us. The next, <laughs> hold on, I have to look because I'm bad with math and shit too. Um, the next show, hold on, is the 23rd of June. Um, we have, thanks to Mona, an, uh, a lesbian, I think, I'm sure she's a lesbian. Um, I hope she's a lesbian because I'm just, <laughs> actually just called her one. Um, <laughs> 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 Her name is uh, Marissa Almanick. Um, she is she's actually uh, living in Florida, and she'll be calling in via Zoom. Um, I will put up on my Facebook page as well as um, you know between the sheets podcast Facebook page, my personal page, Gay and Bruno. People have been blocking me lately, so I have a lot of space. Um, I, I can I, I can finally I have less than five thousand friends, so please friend me. Um, and on Instagram. Those narcissists, yeah, those narcissists. They, they block me. I, I don't understand it. Um, you know, look, some of it, some of it, they block me because I was a bad girl. But some of them is just like befuddling. Bad um, girls a are so bad good. girl. Um, Consider it a compliment, honestly. I thank you. Bad girls are good. But um, QTE Brat, that's my Instagram handle, or BW The Sheets. Um, and again, um, Tony, listen to this, everybody. Tony, <laughs> see this? This is called a hard drive oh. um a hard, hard drive. drive and um i brought it to tony because i have been again not funny but funny extremely lax with posting any shows from was it 2003 2022 mm -hmm. Tw do you have to, 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 yeah. the, uh, every show in 2022 and up till this one I have not posted on the YouTube page because I've been pretty busy. Um, but Tony painstakingly went through all the archives and put all the 2022 shows. So luckily there is a strike. Um, the only thing I have down the pike is Big Brother um, coming up that I have to do a photo shoot for. So I will be spending a lot of days uploading all the past shows um, with all our wonderful uh, guests. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank you for supporting us thank you for listening thank you for sharing i don't know why you fucking don't call but that's okay because we keep it going no matter what you took five six women here we talk a shitload but i just want to say really i do appreciate you um you know the show was for women by women 
um, just to get the word out, to have a really conversational, not planned, and I'm glad that you enjoy it, and I hope that you feel that you can just pull a seat up to this table. So um, be safe, be well, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on the 23rd. Um, as always, my friends, namaste. 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 Turn now to fall apart, lips bleed.